Statistics and Excel hypothesis testing to tail standard deviation of the population is known. Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there are three tabs down below. Example, practice. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Blank example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, it's blank. We're gonna build this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we construct it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at a scenario similar to recent scenarios, except this time we have a two-tail situation, which we will get into in more detail shortly, but the similarities being that we wanna find information about a large population. We can't test every item within that large population. Therefore, our strategy as ever, take a sample of the population, test the sample, hoping we can apply the findings found from the sample to the characteristics of the larger population. Two general methods for doing this, hypothesis testing confidence intervals, with a confidence interval situation that lends itself to situations where we don't know what the middle point is, that's what we're trying to find. And therefore, when we take the sample, the average of the sample is what the middle point will be. And then we're gonna build our confidence interval around it in some way, shape or form. But this time we're looking at hypothesis testing where we think we do have an idea or hypothesis of what that middle point will be. Therefore, we're gonna construct our graph around the hypothesized middle value, then take a sample, seeing whether or not the sample is far enough away from that hypothesized value for us to reject the hypothesis. And that's gonna be the testing process. Now, sometimes we have a type of scenario as we saw in a prior presentation where we imagined a government agency was coming after us as the honey mustard producers or whatever, or we were the government agent, whatever. And they're trying to say, we think that the production of the honey mustard people are, are putting less honey mustard in the bottle than is being said on the bottle, possibly because they kept putting price caps on us or something like that. But that's what, what, they, what they were testing for, in, in which case they're trying to see if it would be a one tail on the left, because we're trying to say, I think it's gonna be they're under filling. So I'm not really worried about the error on the right side. Or we saw an example for housing where we thought that our housing situation prices were on average higher than the national average, in which case we were worried about the, this tail to the right. This time, we're gonna be imagining a two-tail scenario, imagining that we are the production of the honey mustard, and we're just trying to make sure that our production level is accurate. Not too much, not too little. If we fill too much in the bottles, 
then then we're we're cheating ourselves, right? Because we're not making proper estimates of how much material it's going to take. And if we fill it up too small, too little, then we're cheating the customers by not properly labeling how much is in the bottle. So in our case, we want to set our production process to be, we're going to say 16.2 uh, ounces is going to be our middle point. And then, and then I'm worried on both sides. I don't want it to be too outside on both sides. That's what's on the bottle then, 16.2. And now we're taking a sample of our production to see whether or not it's far enough away from that middle point, either on the high end or the low end, for us to reject the hypothesis that on average the production is at the 16.2 ounces. Okay, let's go back on over. And the practice tab, you will recall, has pre-formatted cells. So if you want to practice the practice problem and just input the data without as much Excel formatting, that's what that's for. But... We're over here going to do the Excel formatting all the way here. So let's select the entire worksheet first, selecting the triangle up top, right-clicking on it, formatting the cells. I'm going to go to currency. This is my baseline formatting. I'm laying down the beat like I'm playing a song or something. I've got to lay down the baseline, man. We're going to make it negative and bracketed, no dollar sign. I'm going to remove the decimals to start off with, adding the decimals as needed. Then I'm going to say OK. Let's go to the home tab, font group. Let's make it bold at the same time. You don't have to necessarily do that, but I think it is easier to see and a screen recording. So I'm gonna do it. Let's put a header, hypo we're gonna be doing hypothesis testing. If I spell this wrong, I apologize. Z distributions, meaning we're not using T distributions, but Zs, which means it's a normal distribution curve. Dis distribution it's going to be a two tail type of situation so let's go go ahead and make that black and white for a header formatting home tab font group i'm going to make it black i'm going to make it white all right and then we're going to say that per bottle ounces of honey mustard honey mustard how much do we typically have per bottle? I'm going to make this a little bit larger, double clicking on it. There we go. I'm going to say that on average, we say on the bottle, there's 16.2 ounces. I'm going to add some decimals so I can see that 0.2 on the numbers. And then we're going to say that the standard deviation of the population, STD of the P, is going to be 0.5. Now we're going to imagine that number is known to us. And if it is known, uh, let's I won't make it a percent. I'll just add some decimals Then it's more likely that we can use a normal distribution less likely that we're gonna have to jump on over to the uh, T distributions All right, let's say that the company from the company's perspective Wants to, to make sure the bottle is correct. What do they want want? to make sure the bottle is filled to the proper amount of the 16.2. I don't want to be it too high. I don't want it to be too low. I'm not suspecting that it's kind of off one way or the other. I'm saying I, I'm, I want it to be in the middle point. That's why it's a two tail. Let's make this, uh, let's make this like orange because this is like our, our assumption information. Let's just make this orange. I've been making it blue, but I'm going to make it orange. And then... And then, so therefore, our null hypothesis, H sub zero, null high, hypothesis, hypothesis, and I'm gonna double click on this and select this one and say right click and format sales. And let's make this a subscript. Boom. Null hypothesis. I'm going to make that black and white. Black and white. And so we're going to assume uh, the null hypothesis is to assume it actual amount is at the label amount on average, right? Meaning 16.2. That's what we kind of assume. That's going to be our hypothesis and the alternative, therefore, then, which I'm going to say H sub A 
the alternative hypothesis is uh, uh, the conclusion if the null hypothesis is rejected, which in this case would mean that the amount on average in the bottles is significantly different than 16.2, either on the high end or the low end. All right, if I misspelled any of that stuff, I apologize. I'm not going to fix it right now. I'm going to go back and we'll fix it possibly later. All right, let's go. Let's imagine we're actually going to create our underlying data. Now, obviously, in real life, I couldn't test every bottle of honey mustard because we produce a lot of them. We make a lot of honey mustard bottles. But I want to make the entire population so we from our backstory we know more of the story we know what the actual population is and then we can take the sample and be able to see in reality how close the sample is to the actual population so how can we create the actual population all right let's make a skinny c and i'm going to say this is going to be the pop mean and then i'm going to take the std of the pop i'm going to say the pop mean is going to be let's just say uh 16. So instead of 16.2, I'm just going to say it's 16. I'm going to add uh, some decimals. Do, 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 do. And then the standard deviation is going to be 0.5, adding some decimals. So the actual population mean that we're going to create is close, but not exactly at the 16.2. Might It could be significant, We're going to, but that's what we're going to create the population based on. So I'm going to say, then let's make this skinny over here. And I'm going to take this skinny and say, format paint that over here. And let's actually create our data. This is going to be the population then. Now I'm going to do this using a random number generation around a normal distribution with a middle point at 16, because we would expect if we have a machine making our honey mustard bottles, that it would have a normal distribution around somewhat of a center point and then an error kind of distribution around it, which is a classic example of what we would expect to have a normal distribution. So let's make a random number generation using these things in a normal distribution, which means we need to go to the data tab. If you don't have the data analysis on, you can look up how to turn it on, possibly look it up in chat GTP, I think might give you the good enough instructions. And we're gonna go and say, this is gonna be a random number generation. And we're gonna say one here, number of them. I'm just gonna say good old 500. We've been doing 500 a lot of uh, the time lately. So let's do a 500. And then we'll say it's a normal distribution. And we need the middle point, which is gonna be 16. And we need the standard deviation of 0.5. Where do I wanna put it? I wanna put it in the range on the current worksheet, right in that cell G2. That's where it needs to go to. Let's go ahead and say, okay. And boom, that was fast. I'm gonna say right click and format the cells and let's reformat them because they messed up my formatting, that's okay. Bring it back to currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign. I'll keep the decimals this time at two so we can see that it's not perfectly 16 and so on. I'll make it bold again because they were emboldened before. Let's make this red. I'm gonna make it red because that means that this is what we know out in, but in universe, they don't know this. We know this because we were reading the story from the vantage point of like the reader of the book, but they don't know what's happening within the book. And so we have to keep those two things separate when we're thinking about the story or else if we don't realize the difference, we'll write a story like a modern movie and it'll be terrible. So you have to you have to understand these things. We'll end up like a current Star Wars show or something. It's like, make no sense. How the heck did the person in universe know that for crying out loud? They read the script? What did they read the script? They're in the universe, they could, it's crazy. Anyway, let's go ahead and make, Let now we'll do the actual population. So now I'm going to I'm going to take the average mean the actual mean so the mean of the numbers that were generated actually it's average of these numbers control shift down 
Control backspace, there's the formula, enter. So it's not exactly 16, but it's pretty close. So this is the actual numbers of the population. This is the STDs of the population. How many STDs are in this population, man? Control shift down, control backspace, and we have 0.5. So it's that one's almost exact. If I add some decimals, it's not quite exact, but it's pretty dang close. So these are the numbers we're actually gonna use in the population, which we know, but they don't know in universe because they haven't really tested every item within the population. Our population consisting of 500 items in this case, which is probably low compared to our actual honey mustard production if we were producing honey mustard in real life, but large enough for us to create our scenario around. Let's make a sample. So I'm gonna select these. I'm gonna say format paint to the to column k and we'll take a sample so let's do a count first how many samples do we want to take let's say we just take like 35 one two i'm going to select those two and drag it down till i get to 35 so meaning we're going to take 35 bottles of our honey mustard randomly selected and determine uh what the average amount of honey mustard in the bottle is so I'm going to say, all right. And so let's do, how can we do that? Well, one way we can do that is I could put random numbers next to the population and then sort these like shuffling a deck of cards. Or I could just take the first top 35 because they've already been randomly generated. Or I can use an index function, which is what I'll do here. So I'm going to say sample. Let's make an index function equals index tab of this array of numbers, control shift down, control backspace, comma, random, R-A-N-D, random between. I wanted you to take a random numbers between the top and bottom rows indicated by a one comma, that's not a one, that's an N, a one comma 500. Top is one row one to row 500, close it up and close it up again. Okay, boom. I'm going to double click on it. I have to make sure that this column does not change. Therefore, I'm going to make it absolute dollar signs or F4 here, dollar sign before the letter and number, dollar sign before the letter and number. The range has been locked. Okay. And let's add some decimals just so I can see the decimals and then double click on the fill handle, which will copy it down. It's really like a fill button. Then I'm going to select up top. Let's make this black, white, center it selecting inside control shift down this is now known in universe so i'm going to make this blue instead of red we're going to say the borders drop down i like to use this blue if you don't have it it's in the more colors it's in the color wheel that's the blue right there that's the one you don't have to use that blue it's not important to the problem and you, you will get the same numbers if you use a different blue but that's what i do uh, and so that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. That's what I do. So that's what I'm doing. All right. So then, uh, we could then let's repeat our scenario here in like symbols. I'm going to make a skinny. Let's take this skinny K column format, paint it to make a skinny N. And I'm going to repeat my hypothesis in by just saying H sub O and I'm not going to make it a subscript yet because it's going to get messed up if I do. Instead, I'm going to say colon and then mu. I'm going to add the letter mu. I'm getting fancy here with the symbol homology. We're going to insert symbol. And then if, you don't, if you've been doing it recently, you will have it here. If not, you'll have to find it in the Greek and Coptic section, which is right there. But I have it in the recent. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. Okay. And then I'm going to enter before going back on it to make this a subscript because sometimes it gets messed up after you enter a symbol. Right-click, format the cells, make it a subscript, and OK. So the mu stands for the mean. For So the null hypothesis is that the mu or mean is equal to, I'm going to say equal and then enter so it doesn't try to do a formula, and then it's going to be equal to then we said uh, we thought it was going to be 16.2. That's what we're assuming. Let's add a decimal so I can see the 0.2. That's what's actually on the bottle. 
Uh, and so then we're going to say, what's the H sub A? The alternative is that we're going to have colon mu. Once again, insert symbol mu. Okay. Insert it and then enter. Go back on it. Select the A. Right click on it. Format cells to make it a subscript. So it looks fancy as pantsies with pleats on them. Fancy is pleated pantsies. We're gonna make, so this is how you say it's not equal to in Excel. Instead of like an equal sign with a, with a slash in it, in, in Excel we say it's not, it's not equal with the, with the less than and then greater than. So that's what that means. So then I can make this smaller maybe, Talvez possibly. And then we're gonna say this equals to 16.2. And we can say, let's make this blue and bordered. Home tab, border blue. And then, and then we can say, uh, all right, that's what, let's keep it there. So we'll, we'll keep it there. And then let's make a skinny R. I'm gonna go to the K column, or I can go to the N column. Skinny N, format paint, skinny R. All right, let's take the STD of the sample now. Now this is something that we might not actually use because I already know the standard deviation of the population, but I'm gonna look it up, I'm gonna check it out anyways. This is gonna be equal to the STD of the sample, which we would use if we didn't know the standard deviation of the population, but since we do, we might not use it, this being the thing, that allows us to use the normal distribution or, or helps us to determine whether we use the normal distribution or the T distribution. Let's add some decimals. So you can see it's still pretty close to the, to the 0.5 standard deviation of the population. The standard deviation of the population, let's just pull this over for comparison's sake so we can see them side by side. And I'll add another decimal here. So this is the one we're actually going to use. I'm going to make this one yellow just to show you that I sh that it should be close to that one. But if we know this one, that's the one we're going to use. So I'm going to make this blue. I'm actually going to make this one orange because that's going to indicate that's given data that we knew. So we knew th the standard deviation of the population. We didn't know the red stuff in universe. You're confusing people. You're telling a, you're telling us. A modern Star Wars story now where everything's all messed up. No one knows what it, no one knows what's happening. Okay, calm down. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. Okay. Let me what is this? The rings of power for crying Okay. Alright, that's you've gone too far. My story is way more cohesive than that. Don't you don't you start with me. We're gonna say this is gonna be equal to this is going to be equal to, let's say the count. This is going to be the sample count. And this should be 35, control shift down, enter. So there's 35 of those. All right, and then I'll make that. Well, let's just do the next one. Then the next one's going to be A. Well, let's do X bar is going to be equal to, that's going to be the sample mean. X bar is the sample mean. So we're taking the average of uh, the sample here, remembering that when we could have the sample, the mean of the population, which we don't know, we have the mean of the sample, which is what we're going to take. And we could also imagine the mean of all possible sample combinations of sample size, in this case, 35. All of those means would tend towards the same number, hopefully, the middle point of the population. So this is going to be equal to the average tap ta, 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 of the actual sample, but boom. And so that's going to be 16. Let's add a couple decimals. So, so it's actually 15.8. So you will remember that, 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 that our hypothesis that is that it's going to be at 16.2. Uh, the actual population has, has, which we don't know is at 15.98. Uh, and then the mean of the sample that we took, which is going to approximate possibly the actual population, but is only a sample, is at the 15.8. So we're going to build our graph around this number 
16.2 and see whether this number is far enough away from the middle point of the bell curve for us to reject this hypothesis of the 16.2. Okay, so then we're going to say alpha. How sure do we want to be? Alpha, uh, we're going to say this is going to be 0.05, which is somewhat of an arbitrary number. That's going to be like a common pick though, however. So then we're going to say then this SE, which is going to be the standard error, which is kind of like the standard deviation. And remembering that we could have the standard deviation of the population, which we're, we think is known in this case. So we know what that is. It's this or this, which is, you know, those are the same number, but this one add a decimal. And then, and then we have the standard deviation of the sample, which is this number, which we're not going to use because we already know this because we know the standard deviation of the population, but they should kind of possibly tend towards each other. But what we want is, is the standard deviation as though we're taking every combination of whatever sample size we chose, in this case, 35, and we're taking the average of all those. That's what's going to tend towards our bell curve according to the central limit theorem. So that's what we're going to calculate here with our formula, which I don't have the formula, but the standard formula is going to be that we've seen many times is going to be the standard deviation of the population if it's known, which it is in our case, divided by the square root SQ square root of the sample size, which in our case is 35. Sample size is 35. So we're going to say, all right, let's add some decimals on that one. Adding some decimals, we'll just decimalize it. Decimalized. All right, and then we're going to say the Z, which is going to be the test statistic. So now we can say, okay, if I'm imagining that we're going to build our graph, let's just think about this for a second. We build our graph around the middle point based on the hypothesis, which in our case was the 16.2 is what we're building the graph around. And then we're going to get the actual number that we got based on the sample, which is the middle point of, of this number. And now the question is, well, how far away from the middle point is our actual number? Is it far enough away for us to reject the hypothesis? So when I, when I go back on over here, we're looking at our Z test, trying to convert this, this average number that would to x's because be, remember that i can i can measure how far the middle point in terms of z's which is basically in terms of standard deviations which we're measuring in standard errors uh normally if we have two standard deviations away then that would be like 90 of about 95 percent of the data and then like uh five percent in the tails right so i can measure these in x's which is the ounces in the bottle or in Z's. So now I want to convert to, to Z's. How do I convert to Z's? That's our classic conversion uh, to Z formula, which is going to be equal to brackets. The number we got 15.92 as the middle point minus the number we're building the graph around, which was, uh, which was the hypothesis. Let's take it up here. 16.2 close that out, divided by the standard deviation, not of the sample, not of the population, because we're building our bell curve off of the standard error standard deviation. And that's going to give us that. Let's add some decimals, decimalizing it so we can recognize. So we're at uh, 1.38 at this point. It's going to keep changing as I double click on it, right? Because that number is going to keep on shuffling around. But that in standard deviations now is saying how far away we are in standard deviations. Okay, so given that, then we can do a, a p test. So let's do a p value. P value is going to be it's going to be equal to the norm dot s dot dist tab, and then it needs the z. We just calculated the Z, which is going to be this number. And then comma, do we want it to be cumulative? In this case, we do. Therefore, we're going to say uh, one, not zero, one. Close it up and enter. 
Let's add some decimals. Duh, 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 duh. Okay. Now this is a little tricky because this is going to give us the value under the curve. We're trying to look up the under the curve value. So notice I was over here. I'm looking at the, the area under this bit on the left hand side. But remember we have a two tail test. So I want the area on both sides of, of the two tails possibly. So if I go back in here and say times two, then then we're gonna get then we're gonna get our P. Now notice, so if I'm looking at the areas of the the endpoints, then the areas of these two endpoints is gonna be the 0.05%. And if we're gonna be out here somewhere less than that, then then we have to have an area that's gonna be less than that 0.05. So in other words, if this number is less than that 0.05, then we would reject it. If it's if if this number is greater than the 0.05, that would happen if I'm somewhere in the, if my point was somewhere in the orange area, in which case we would not reject it. Now, if this is somewhat close, uh, this is if I keep on double clicking on this, it's always looks like if I keep on going, it's going to be less than the 0.05, which leads to the rejection. All right, so how can I, I could do a formula here to kind of figure that out. Notice the formula is a little bit tricky because, well, no, it's not. I could just say this is going to be equal to if this number is, uh, is less than 0.05, then, well, let's do an if function. It's a little bit tricky. If tab logic test, if this number is less than, uh, this number 0.05, then what do you want us to do? Comma, we want you to say reject. I'm going to put a quote, say reject, end quote. What do you want us to do? Comma, if that in, in, in the other instance, quote, no reject. Hopefully I got that right. And then enter. So now it, uh, it's going to reject it. So I can also say, let's go ahead and, and make it even fancier home tab and style, format it. And let's say if this is equal to, to, to equal to, if this is equal to reject, we want you to make it red. So now it turns red if it says reject, right? All right, let's try it. Another, another way we can do it is we can look at uh, the critical value. So let's say this is going to be the critical value. Let's say lower, lower, and then the crit critical value upper. Notice we need two critical values, and I'm going to measure these in Z nows. So I'm looking for the Z at like this point and this point. At which points, if I go above this one or below that one. Those are the those are the points where we have enough evidence we think to reject the original hypothesis. So let's do that. This is going to be equal to the norm dot s dot, and then it's going to be inverse norm dot s dot inverse, and the probability once again is going to be that point uh, oh five, and I'm going to take the point oh five because it's a two tail. Now we're taking the point oh five divided by two. 0.05 divided by two, because it's going to be each tail has a symmetrical amount point of, you know, 5% divided by two, 2.5. So we're going to say, okay, enter. And then let's go ahead and add some decimals. So it's at the uh, 1.96, which is kind of what you would expect. And then I'm going to say this is negative of that number. And why would I expect that? Well, if I if I look at this, if I go back on over here, we, we chose to have a uh, 0.05 alpha, which means that the area of the middle point, if we're talking about a two tail, is is going to be 95%, one minus the 5%. And we know that within two standard deviations around 1.96 about, right, standard deviations, that's when you're going to have the 95% in the middle and then in the corners or in the ends, you would have the added 5%, which would be the 2.5 on each side. So that seems uh, to be uh, correct. And so now we're going to say that this number that we actually got is is 
further than this point on the left. So we're going to basically uh, reject this one. Now I, I could try to do like one reject function that has that has two pieces to it because we're going to reject it. So let's try to do a, a formula here. We're going to say if tab and let's embed another and function. There's two things uh, that that could happen to reject it. So if this number is, let's say, less than this number, we would reject it. And comma, if this number is greater than this number, we would also reject it. Closing up the and function, comma, what do you want to do if if this is true? If we if that was true, we're going to reject. And then I have to put quotes around that though, because it's going to be that's text. And then comma, what do you want us to do if that's not the case? Quotes, no reject or something like that in quotes and enter. All right, so so now it's saying no reject. Because now this one happened when I clicked on it, this one is now uh, is now not past that interval. Let's double click on it. And now it's at the reject and this one is still at no reject. Why is that something funny happened? So, all right, it shouldn't be an and, it should be like an or function. Or, let's try an or, if either of those test that out. There we go, I think that's right. All right, and then I'm gonna format paint this here. If that, hopefully I got that right. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that, but so now they look like they're going in alignment with each other. All right, so let's go ahead and say, let's make this bordered and blue. Let's make this whole thing bordered. Let's make this thing blue. Let's make this bordered and blue and then make this bordered. Okay. So now let's do a, a graph. Let's make our graph. So I'm going to make a skinny V over here. So we're going to say uh, the R, we're going to say painter and make a skinny V. So there, so there we have it. And so now let's go ahead and graph this out. So I'm going to do it this way this time. I'm going to start with the Z's because I think this, this way is possibly a little bit easier to do it. I've been doing this lately. And so if I start with Z's, remembering that if I'm trying to see how large this graph needs to be, two standard deviations is going to be enough to take 95% of the data. If I go four standard deviations out, then I should be taking, I should be able to include just about all the data. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to say, let's go negative four standard deviations to negative 3.99, adding some decimals to those. And I'm going to copy that down till I get to a positive four. So this is going to be a much more detailed graph than the prior way I was doing it because we're going up in intervals or steps of, you know, 0.01. And we'll bring this all the way out to four. You could use a sequence function, which might be a little bit faster to do that, but not too bad to do that. And then I'm going to say if, if that is that, then I can calculate the X. So I can calculate the X by saying if this is four standard deviations, this is going to be equal to the standard error. That's how many that's what we're using for the standard deviations times the four. And then I'm going to take that and add to it the middle point, which is going to be what we built the graph on, which is the average on the hypothesis, not the what we got on the sample because we're building the graph around the middle point of the hypothesis and this point is going to be the amount that's away from it that will help us to determine to reject or not so i'm going to say okay let's go back on it let's add some decimals double clicking i needed to have some absolute references so the t and the q are outside therefore in the q f4 dollar sign before the q and the one dollar sign before the t and the six this one i want to move down so i will leave it alone enter double click the fill handle button boom and then this one's going to be our p of x which we'll do our calculation with our good old equals norm dot dist function which is going to be this x comma 
The mean, once again, is the hypothesized mean, not the mean we got from the sample F4 on the keyboard, so I can copy it down, dollar sign before the Q and the one comma, standard deviation, not the standard deviation of the sample or the population, but the standard deviation of the sampling error, because that's what we're using to create the bell curve, which is more likely to be bell curved due to the central limit theorem, comma, or, or <laughs> absolute reference, dollar sign before the T and the six, comma, and then cumulative or not, not cumulative in this case, zero, therefore closing it up, enter. Let's percentify to recognize, add some decimals, and then double click the fill handle button. Boom. All right, let's do some formatting here. We're gonna make this black and white and centered. And then let's go ahead and just make our graph first. Gonna say, this is the data, control shift down, control backspace, insert up top. We wanna go to our charts. I'm gonna add a new chart so we can get an area graph, all charts. We want the area graph. That's what I'm gonna be doing at least. Check in the area, boom, there's our graph. Nice bell-shaped curve. Shaping it like a bell. That curve has got some nice curves on that graph. So then I'm gonna go to the uh, data and change my X, my X values to be the X values. Control shift down, control backspace. It hasn't populated yet, so I'm gonna select this little thing. And then I can see it's populating, so that looks like it's the way it needs to be. Okay, so then I also wanna create my, my X values in Zs, but I can't do that unless I add another set of data, which I'm gonna add anyways, because I also wanna put the range here. So I could label the range as these are my two upper and lower points to help me to get those tails of the graph. I'm gonna be graphing the middle part. Let's do a dynamic header to show what I'm doing. This is gonna be equal to uh, I want to say this lower has to, and then I'm going to say is is going to be x has to be uh, x has to be greater greater than that, and this is going to be z has to be greater than that, and then z has to z has to be less than th that. Now wait a second, hold on a second. I'm going to graph the middle point. Z has to be greater than that z, and then z has to be less than that. That's what we want. Now, if I say enter, it has a problem. If I double click on it, that's because this needs to be text. Quotes around the text. Quotes around the text. Still has a problem because I need to put an and to tie together the quotes, a not between the quotes and the others. And that's better, but now it's got too much decimals. So I'm going to go back into it and round it, putting a round tab. Let's go two decimals out, comma two close it up and then a round tab two decimals out comma two close it up and enter MUI b to the n bin let's make it black and white center black white center and then we're going to do a, a logic function here to pick up those numbers i only want it to give me these numbers if the z is between these intervals how can i do that equals if tab Let's add an AND function because now there's an, there's two th conditions that need to be met. And so I'm going to say tab and we want the Z. This Z has got to be, it's got to be greater than uh, this number and AND comma, this Z has to be less than this number. Close up the AND getting back to the if, if that's true, what do you want us to do? I want you to give me that number, comma. If it's not true, leave it blank. How do I know to leave it blank? We'll just put a space there, quote, space, quote, end it. Now to copy this down, I'm gonna have to say everything that's in column T needs to be absolute. I don't want this range to move. So there's a T, F4, there's a T, F4, dollar sign before the T and whatever numbers related to it, enter. And I, nothing's there. That's what would be expected. Let's percentify, add some decimals, and then drop it down and see if it works like it should be working. So it got to go way down here, and there it starts populating. So it looks like it's doing kind of what we would expect. Let's add it to the graph and see if it looks like what we would expect there. 
select in the graph charts data and we're going to say let's add some data series i'm going to name it that and then i'm going to say let's delete this and say the range is going to be right here control shift down control backspace it's not populating because i see it doesn't have a thing over here select that and then again there it's populating okay 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 boom let's see what it did okay paso so there it is so now that, that looks good let's double click on it because now i want to add my z's down below double clicking on this to have a secondary axis it tries to put it over here which i don't want it to do and excel you should know me by now you should have some ai in you to know what i want you're not you don't know what my needs are you should be better than that okay so then we're gonna say let's go to the data and we're gonna say for the second set of data i'm gonna have a, another x so i'm gonna select this one and we want this to be the z's control shift down control backspace and then it's not showing up yet so click click there it is it's showing up okay boom but it's still not showing up here k paso so i need to go to the plus button and say i want to have axes i want you to include the secondary axis and then it puts it at the top it's like dude i don't like it at the top you, i do this every time every time excel and you still do the same thing let's bring it down to the bottom i shouldn't even need to tell you at this point to do that okay that's okay oh god some people let's go ahead and add a line all right so if we analyze what we got now we're going to say that the middle point in z's is at zero or it's at the middle point that we hypothesized it to be which is 16 this should be 16.2 16.2 that's the middle point point. and then we're trying to see if it's outside this area 95 percent in the middle because we said that we wanted a alpha of five which means we have two tails and the end so if i go to the, this end tail i can measure it in x's or in z's we measured it over here with the critical value in z's so that's going to be the 1.96 so 1.96 is going to be out here uh so uh, uh and z is 1.96 about right and then 1.96 about up this way if i convert that to like i converted let's find 1.96 here 1. 1. Point, uh, 1.96 is about 16.04 ounces so i could convert that to you know an x so it'd be about 16.4 ounces right right about there and so and then what we said we came up with is a, is an, an average of 16. so 16 instead of 16.2 which was the middle so 16 is is way out here so you can see it's way out into the tail. So you would expect then visually that that looks like it's far enough away from the middle point for us to reject the original hypothesis. Check out that machine, get the maintenance guy in here because that thing is not filling up according to its, its directions. Control shift down, let's put some brackets around the borders, make it blue. Atomosa, it's beautiful. All right, there we have it.